Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about professional ethics and the ethics of being a Unix systems administrator or a Windows systems administrator um, for that matter. In any case, I want to talk a little bit about ethics because ethics is important in every endeavor and uh, in life in general. And you always have ethical dilemmas. But some occupations tend to have more ethical issues that um, come up from time to time than other occupations. Um, you know, for example, doctors are often dealing with life and death issues, uh, with issues of privacy versus need to know, um, as well as with billing issues and whatnot. Lawyers, um, if you ever deal with a lawyer, there's a lot of ethical issues that lawyers have to deal with. and. Um, many many lawyers are really good in dealing with ethical issues and uh, avoiding conflicts of interest and uh, uh, balancing between their clients' uh, rights to be represented and society's rights to something that is fair and uh, legally just. Um, Programmers, on the other hand, is an occupation, or actually, bartenders. Bartenders, you're often dealing with ethical issues. You know, how much how alcohol do you serve to a person? When do you send them home when they appear to be drunk? When do you, what do you do if they're going to drive a car home and um, and you don't think they're in any condition to drive? Um, you know, uh, what happens if your employer doesn't want to pay for a taxi for them? Um, I, what happens if there's an issue of somebody harassing a woman in the bar um, or, or vice versa? Um, um, you, know, at what, you know, at what point do you get involved in people's personal affairs? Um, uh, other jobs do not involve a lot of ethical issues. I was a laborer for the Bern, uh, 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 SPNS Railroad for um, four or five summers. Um, and that was a great job. One of the nice things about it, it, it was a great job. But one, one of the nice things about being a laborer for the, uh, for the railroad is there were very few ethical issues that came up. You would uh, inspect the track. You would do that uh, diligently because people's lives and safety depended on it. If there were broken pieces, you replaced them. You replaced broken ties. You uh, um, built sidings that the company wanted built. Uh, um, but there was really a dilemma of, you know, am I going to cheat on this issue or that issue or, or anything of that type. Uh, programmers, likewise, have very few ethical issues that come up. Uh, you're building tools. The tools, in most cases, are pretty neutral tools that can be used by people using computers for good and, um, and by people using the computers for with evil intentions. Um, um, you know, there may be a time that you're asked to build a tool to, you know, make vest for bombers or something, in which case it's pretty clear that maybe that's not the job for you. Um, but it's really pretty unusual that programmers get involved in, in, in things where there's a lot of hard ethical decisions. Yes, it does happen, but, but less frequently than, uh, well, less frequently than systems administrators. Systems administrators, you're often, often involved in with ethical dilemmas. And you have to decide what you're going to do. And if you don't like to be involved with ethical dilemmas all the time, you know, don't be a systems administrator. Uh, you've always got issues of different people fighting over different resources, somebody trying to use the computer system to um, intimidate somebody else in, in some sense, or, or trying to use the power of the computer system to you know, put somebody else in a bad position job-wise. Um, there are many issues that do come up. Um, one of the things that a systems administrator does have to do is make up his mind who he's loyal to. 
uh, and who he works for. Do you work for management? Or to what extent do you work for management? Um, to what extent do you simply work for your, or are you, should you be loyal to your professional standards, to the standards of good systems administration, whatever that means, and, and to your colleagues in the industry? Um, or, uh, um, or to your coworkers and uh, like that, or to what extent should you represent your customers, the the systems users, and um, and um, and that is kind of a toss because sometimes uh, the systems users need things and want things that the management doesn't think they need and want. And the question is, are you working for management or are you working for the customers, uh, for the users? There are arguments to be made both ways. And in a sane moment, management will probably sit down and realize that there are arguments to be made both ways. Um, um, it's true that management pays you your salary. On the other hand, uh, management can only pay you your salary because because you have a well-working, well-functioning company, and that really is a team effort, and that involves everybody: the uh, uh, secretaries and the clerks, as well as the CEOs, and um, and um, and you have to decide where you fit in that scheme of things. Um, there are also um, loyalties and obligations that one does have to the general public, um, to the country, to uh, uh, higher values, um, your creator or who, uh, whoever. Um, and those are important values and, um, you know, most of us can't work certain places because um, because they don't fit our values. I basically couldn't. I am glad that some people work in certain security agencies, but at, I couldn't do it. That's not um, that's not in my personality. I couldn't sleep well at night if I did that. Um, it's not for me. Um, on the other hand, I'm glad that some people can do it because because that's something I can't do. Um, there's a lot of issues involving intellectual property. Um, and they, they do come up. Sometimes you could be asked to install computers, possibly by a boss or a manager, to install software on a computer that is not uh, copyrighted, or that that is that has a proprietary copyright, and you do not have license rights for that. Um, then you, you know, you have to think where you stand, where you want to work, um, how long you want to work someplace, whether there's some way of sabotaging it without the boss knowing. Um, um, I mean, there are various solutions to that. Um, or, quite frankly, whether you want to do it. And, um, and, and maybe, um, maybe you do see a certain limited use of certain things as being within, uh, what do you say, within um, um, a, f a, f a fair use. Um, and realize those laws vary a great deal country by country, what fair use is and what fair use isn't. There is software that I can use in one country that I can't use in another country, or I might have difficulty. As an example, the very Kodak uh, rule, uh, Kodak codexes that we use for audio and video. Many of them are free and openly available throughout the world with the notable exceptions of the United States of America and Japan. And um, so, you know, uh, point your computers elsewhere. Uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, actually, some of that is done. Um, there are people who run, you know, organizations that do gambling or do illegal activities that run at that point. There, are, you know, have their servers in, uh, well, in some little island that France owns off the coast of Canada. Um, 
that type of thing is done. I don't know if it's ethical. Well, I, that depends on the details. You, that's your job to work that out if you get in that position. Um, I've seen situations, maybe even been involved in situations where a person could have been asked to uh, destroy certain uh, where where there was open source software and there was only, you know, the developers had just developed this and there were not many copies of that code around to get rid of that code so it uh, so they could make a proprietary version and it wouldn't compete with the proprietary version. Um, quite frankly, when I, if I was ever asked to do that, I would not do that. Um, um, and, um, and quite frankly, I have been asked, and I actually that's when I broadcast the software to the whole world. <laughs> um, and uh, and I never admitted I did it as long as I worked for that employer. Um, I suppose there were suspicions. Um, and um, so anyway, um, the issues involving intellectual property rights do come up. Um, and many of these are hard to answer issues. There, there is no, I mean, I can't make a blanket statement. I, I don't always know what's right and wrong myself. But avoiding the issue is not an option. You've got to deal with it when it come, does come up. Another issue that comes up a lot in computers, computing, is when somebody's trying to use the machine or use the system to um, hoard information so that they're the, uh, to secure their job by hoarding information or by hoarding power. And this is why a lot of security systems are made overly tight. They're really, really just made that way, not for um, um, securing the system or protecting the system. They're made that way to protect somebody's job. Um, or somebody's reputation, or something of that type, and um, at, beware of that sort of thing, and never participate in it yourself. Um, uh, at least that's my own rules. Um, the um, also in a computer environment, there's always a lot of um, I said sexual harassment down here, but. Much of it is much more subtle than sexual harassment. It is uh, uh, issues, sometimes certain people, um, uh, people who do not speak English as well as other people, in some cases, people who are female, uh, in some cases, or, uh, or other groups of people are not treated fairly, and um, this is notorious. In, in particular, the treatment of women in computing is notorious. Um, and a lot of women complain about it, and their complaints are quite justified. And you know, one has to be careful and in that regard, I think. Um, if you are a woman, and um, one of the, uh, and you're a technology woman. One of the rules is if there's a screwdriver and there's something to be taken apart, you grab it first. Never let a man grab it before you do, <laughs> um, because you got to kind of, um, um, oh, what do you say? You got to establish your role as an equal. And once your role is established, um, generally you can do pretty much what you you want to. But you do have to establish your role as an equal. Um, and if you're a man, you know, realize that women are are equals and um, treat them that way. And always be sensitive to things because sometimes uh, one can inadvertently be um, insensitive because we live in a society where um, that does have gender roles that we are breaking down. and. Um, and and you know this change does take time. Okay, um, I guess my time's about used up here. I probably do want to come back and talk just a little bit about privacy issues and some legal issues. That will be fairly short, but uh, I'll be back in a moment. Bye bye. <laughs>